Here we go again. The Storm Prediction Center has put out a day four slight risk for severe weather. And a lot of the same areas that got impacted last week on Tuesday, March the 29th in portions of Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas. And yes, they already have an enhanced risk. This is a rare enhanced risk for a day five. And on Wednesday, March the 30th, in the same areas and portions of Mississippi and Louisiana getting into Arkansas and Western Tennessee and then it just continues on to the East Coast on Thursday March the 31st and now we have a slight risk for severe weather in portions of the Carolinas and Virginia so welcome back everyone how's it going this is your Saturday March the 26th update uh, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe if you hadn't subscribed already we got a lot to go over this afternoon so here's today i mean it's quiet <laughs> it's really quiet out there a lot of conditions are pretty warm experiencing this warm spring temperatures we do have some red flag warnings in place in the portions of texas as well as uh georgia here into the carolinas a lot of it has to do with plenty of heat you can see the tail of two cities here with an extended pretty strong cold front for this time of year that is where all the cold air is going to be flying over the next several days and, and even snow is going to be flying as well so even today we've got high temperatures yes those are high temperatures folks in portions of the dakotas and minnesota we're talking 20s for high temperatures and that's every completely the opposite here in the desert southwest i mean that's not a misprint that is 97 degrees in fact phoenix hit 96 yesterday so it's only a matter of time before one of those triple digits pop up but yeah well into the 90s in the desert southwest and even the 90s in texas where a lot of these areas out west and into the intermountain west are experiencing those well above average 15 to 20 degrees above average temperatures and you can actually see the display over the next several days and how the temperature is going to be laying out you got well below average temperatures for a good chunk of the great lakes into the ohio valley into the northeast with the anywhere from 10 to 15 degrees below average temperatures and yes yeah, the complete opposite out here in the west and the desert southwest and much of the uh, much of texas here with those 10 15 to 20 degrees above average temperatures but that's only for the next couple of days and things will change as we get into that monday time frame we're watching a pretty significant trough that's going to be diving down here off the west coast and you can definitely see where the cold air is flying where you have that instability off the northwest flow here that's where it's going to bring some much colder conditions and even some snow for them but here is our severe weather setup and this is just the beginning we're going to be seeing some much needed rain over portions of california but this is the same system that's going to be traversing across it's going to bring the severe weather for the central u.s on tuesday and then also the severe weather for portions of uh, louisiana getting into mississippi and arkansas and western tennessee on wednesday time frame and that just continues with that severe threat in portions of the carolinas into virginia on that thursday but underneath it there's the surface map for monday afternoon huh. that is some much needed precipitation and a bone dry california right now so they will take any and everything they get so the, we got more rain coming back into portions of uh, washington and oregon and out here off the west coast into california that's the same system that's going to be traversing across and moving with a strong upper level trough that's going to be setting up along the dry line as we get into that tuesday afternoon four o'clock time frame so typically this particular setup is kind of a dry line setup you got a cold air up following on the back side you can see where all the cold air is beginning to start to come to fruition but out ahead of it there's the the, the kind of the moist air the most instability air and that's when I think thunderstorms are going to be starting to erupt onto the east and southeast of this side of the upper level trough as we get into Tuesday afternoon. And we got a lot of shear to contend with as well. So that's going to be setting up over the severe threat in portions of Kansas and Oklahoma, as well as in portions of Texas, as that dry line gets active into the afternoon hours and especially into the overnight hours. So let's break this down and take a look at some of the dew points as we get into that late evening into the overnight hours on that tuesday night wednesday morning time frame there's the dew points i mean when you're seeing dew points of the mid 60s range low 60s that's plenty of kind of 
fuel to fuel these fires, especially with the dynamics, are going to be in place with that upper level jet and that strong uh, that strong shear that's going to be in place as well, and that's going to uh, set up a severe threat off the dry line out here in uh, West Texas as we get into the late evening hours, and you can kind of see about 10 o'clock in the in the evening time frame. On Tuesday, I think that's when the the storms are going to become more numerous. I think that's when they'll be starting to turn uh, severe off the dry line into portions of West Texas, into Oklahoma, and getting into portions of Kansas here. Out ahead of it, there is a strong capital inversion in the North Texas area where I think it's going to be inhibiting the discrete any supercells that may try to form or become surface-based out ahead of the main sector so i'm really not expecting severe weather threat into the north texas area as of yet as you get into that 10 o'clock time frame on a tuesday evening but that will change as we go into the overnight hours i think as this line transitions into a nasty squall line with some bow segments to contend with and transfers to more of a a wind threat for more of that 60 and 70 mile per hour uh, damaging wind threat as this traverses across in the overnight hours into portions of Oklahoma, uh, getting into uh, North Texas as well as in Central Texas. So definitely be on the lookout with some very damaging winds out there as we get into the overnight time frame. And of course, we'll be fine tuning this as this severe threat gets closer. But for now, this is always the time of the year where I go into the schools and I did several presentations lately. I got one next week where I talk about severe weather preparedness. And this is what you should be using as well in your, your own households and your family. When, when a warning goes off, do you have a safety plan in place? You know to go into your lowest floor of the house, secure away from all windows, get out of your vehicles. And because most of the most of the deaths and injuries are actually caused by flying debris from a tornado and that is the most significant impact and you don't want to be left in your car because those flying debris of uh, you see those woods flying through windshields all the time so that's typically what causes the most uh deaths and injuries with tornadoes is flying debris but also your a uh, flash flood safety as well so we're going to be getting to that time of year where we're going to be getting a tremendous amount of rain in a short amount of time in some of these squall lines and some of these isolated areas so flash flood is the number one cause of death in the united states uh a lot of it because of, because of, you have rapidly rising uh, temperature i mean water you realize it only you know needs six inches of water to kind of elevate a small car and it takes only takes about 12 inches to elevate a truck so if you can't see the surface of the road you're not supposed to drive through it. That turn around, don't drown is definitely the best thing you can do in those situations. And when you get in under a severe thunderstorm or even lightning safety, yes, if you're if you're close enough to hear thunder, that means you're close enough to get struck by lightning. So that's the rule of thumb. When the thunder roars, get indoors, and that's why they have that you know, in place because it's dangerous. You could be struck by lightning any many miles away and it's happened numerous times so definitely some of those severe weather safety tips in play as we get deeper into uh severe weather season but yeah as we continue into that wednesday time frame i think the severe threat really starts to ramp up for one reason is because the shear is going to be really ramped up by then and the portions of louisiana get into mississippi and portions of western tennessee but it's also happening during kind of peak heating of the afternoon. You're going to have a lot more warmer temperatures. You're going to have a lot more uh, cape instability in place. And that's why even right now on a day five risk, the Storm Prediction Center has highlighted that enhanced risk for severe weather. So yes, this could be a, le a little bit more significant event than what you might be seeing in the portions of Kansas and Oklahoma and Texas into the overnight hours on Tuesday into Wednesday uh, timeframe. But yeah, underneath the surface, you can kind of display to see where these storms are gonna be about into the afternoon hours, about Wednesday, one o'clock timeframe. We could have, should have numerous supercell thunderstorms and some of these discrete supercells would be rotating so tornadoes 
is something to be on the lookout for along with those damaging winds and that hail threat as well into portions of Louisiana, get into Mississippi and Arkansas, heading eventually heading up towards Western Tennessee and portions of Western Kentucky here as we get deeper into the afternoon hours. But that severe threat just continues to push off into Thursday afternoon and it'll be setting up shop over portions of the Carolinas and as well as uh, Virginia as we get into that Thursday afternoon uh, time frame. But there's also a cold side to this. So I showed you those well below average temperatures at the beginning of the, of the video. And you got all the severe threat on the south side. So let's take you back and talk about the cold side of it as well. So as we get into the evening hours on Wednesday, uh, get into the morning hours on Wednesday morning here. Yeah, there's the low pressure system. The rain should start becoming to an end in portions of North Texas. The severe threat transfers over into Eastern Oklahoma and Eastern uh, uh, Texas here. But off to the north, uh, just to the northwest of there, of that surface low, that's where it's gonna be cold enough to, to have some snow gonna be flying into the Rockies here, into portions of uh, Nebraska, into portions of the Dakotas, North Dakota, get it into portions of uh, Minnesota here, but that's ice, guys. Yeah, that is some ice and some sleet that's gonna be flying, so you're not only gonna be have to deal with some of that heavier snow, but underneath that, yeah, some of these areas and uh, portions of uh, Wisconsin here, especially getting into, into Michigan, and the portions of uh, potentially uh, Pennsylvania, even portions of Ohio here could be looking at some kind of a, a kind of a mixed precipitation of some sleet into uh, some freezing rain as we get into that Wednesday morning time frame as that cold sector really starts to come into play. But I think it just kind of intensifies as we get into your Thursday to end March. Yeah, we got that pretty significant snow gonna be flying on the backside. Look at that 974 low pressure. That is pretty intense for March standards. We could be looking at some moderate to even heavy snow into portions of Iowa, getting into Minnesota, transferring over into Wisconsin here. So winter's gonna be coming back with a vengeance for parts of the country but then this on the warm side of it you're gonna have to be dealing with all that heavier rain and the severe threat as we get into that Thursday morning time frame as this continues to push off into portions of the southeast and getting into the Carolinas uh, by then I think by Friday time frame that will just continue to push off into the east coast we're talking a 997 low pressure over portions of the Northeast as we get into your April Fool's time frame. That's no joke, folks. That's snow going to be flying still into portions of Wisconsin and into, into along the Great Lakes. So we could be looking at some pretty healthy totals for that, you know, Wednesday, Thursday, getting into Friday time frame. And I think this will kind of wind down as we get into portions of the Mid-Atlantic into the Northeast as far as like your snow or at least your heavier snow will be uh I think the heaviest snow is going to be over portions of the Great Lakes and getting into the upper Midwest uh, of the country. So, hey, I appreciate you guys following me. If you don't follow me on my other social media platforms, please, please do so. I got a quick link here you can actually click on. I got my website, which is ponderonweather.com. I'm also on Instagram. I, I'm, I have a TikTok as well. I'm pretty active, getting to be a little bit more active on Twitter. I'm really active on uh, Facebook. And of course, I have my YouTube channel here. So if you hadn't subscribed already, just hit the subscribe button and the notification bell because I do do timely updates and keep you well ahead of the storm. And I'll be posting on these other platforms that have intermediate updates as well. So, hey, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Do like this video and definitely leave your comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update where I protect you before and after the storm.